All right, all I'd like to tell you suggest. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to overclock that Ryzen 5 3600 CPU. We're going to be overclocking on the Gigabyte B550M DS3H motherboard. Just as a disclaimer, this is a tutorial or a how to to show you how to get this done. If you decide to do this to your own computer component, you are fully responsible for anything that may happen to them. I am not held responsible for anything that may happen to your computer components if you try to do this to your own components. Just because this is what I got on my Ryzen 5 3600 on the Gigabyte B550 MDS 3H motherboard, it is not indicative of that's what you can get out of yours. Every CPU will overclock a little bit different and Android's voltage is a little bit different. But this is a how-to that shows you how to do it. That way you can get the max performance out of that CPU. Let me roll the footage and I'll show you how to get this CPU overclocked on this motherboard. Alright guys, and set this up here to get the baseline to see what the 3600 acts like on this motherboard straight out of the box with no overclocking. We need to get a baseline in here. So let's go down here to the search. And we will put in hardware monitor info. Which is it's just software I like to run for my temperatures and whatnot. Uh, we'll go with sensors only. That's all we need, really, the sensors. Um, right up here is your CPU usage, which ain't much. But it will be once we start running the test. Um, the core of BIDs, which is the core voltage, that'll flux right throughout the test. Let's go here and get Cinebench R23 lit up. We'll go to base scores here on Cinebench R23. Uh, there we go. Well, we can set up the minimum time. We will do a 10 minute test just due to the time of our uh, time frame restrictions here. And we, uh, of course, want the multi core performance because when we do the overclocking, we will be overclocking all cores available. So we'll go ahead and hit the run button on this. And we will pull up the Hardware info, that way we can monitor the temper, temperatures, the voltage, you know, make sure it's actually running the CPU usage of 100%, which it is. And we will come back and see what that looks like here in 10 minutes. All right, all, there we go. After 10 minute test, stress test, I'm gonna send a bench R23 with the Ryzen 5 3600 six core processor, running the stock settings out of the box. It looks like we got a score of 9,487. Get over here and look at hardware info here. Let's blow this up so we can see it here a little bit, maybe. Um, looks like the core voltage, it did reach a max of 1.40, which is a little bit higher than what I like to set mine. Me, personally, when uh, going in and overclocking, I like to set that at about 1.35 volts. Um, the max, of course, the maximum CPU cores was 100%. You know, uh, may hit up to 4.42.0 on all cores, on each of the cores, which is what they should be able to get to on the max frequency. So it looks like it did spend some time up there this max frequency. Let's go ahead and memorize this here. And we're gonna go ahead and get into the BIOS here, see what we can do with the overclocking side of it. We're gonna have to restart and start typing the delete key. All right, here we are inside the BIOS. This is the screen it will take you to when you first get into your BIOS. And I just reset the system and started typing the delete key to get into this. Uh, information on it is the B550 MDS3H. BIOS version is 13G. We are running the 5 3600 6 core processor. We do have 16 gigs of RAM. It is dual channel. We run G, G skills, 8 gigs, 2133 megahertz, and two different slots. And yes, I did not overclock my RAM for this. You can get better numbers out of your AMD Ryzen processor if you overclock your RAM. I'm leaving mine at stock because this is a how to or tutorial on how to overclock your CPU. And I don't want, if the RAM ends up being unstable at a certain point, I don't want it to want me to think that it's a CPU overclock unstable when it's actually a RAM overstable. So I'm gonna leave that as is. All right, we're gonna go over here. Down here it says advanced mode or F2, whichever way you wanna hit it. We're gonna hit F2. Okay, the CPU clock, 
clock control. We're going to leave that on auto. That's 100 megahertz. So whatever you set the CPU clock ratio at, it times by this number. At 100.00 megahertz, whatever you set it to, that's what it's going to times it by. We're going to go to the CPU clock ratio, which is auto. It says 36. We're going to double click on that and we're going to hit 45 and hit enter. We should put it up to 45.00, which would be 4.5 gigahertz. Now, I'm not too sure on if what the voltage pushing into the CPU can handle that 4.5 gigahertz offset. So we're going to go down here to CPU B core, which is the voltage regulations for what your voltage will allow for your uh, CPU to use. AMD says you can go up to 1.45. I don't trust 1.45. I think that's a little high. If you see any of my other videos, I go with 1.35 volts and hit enter. It comes up with 1.352 volts, which I'm all right with that. I'm comfortable with that one. And to make sure this thing don't overclock by itself, you want full control of it, we're gonna go under our advanced CPU settings. Core performance boast says auto. You wanna double click on that. We're going to double click on that and we're going to hit disable because you don't want the motherboard deciding if it's on the overclock or not. You want it, what your settings to say to effect. Okay, go up here and hit save and exit. Go over here and hit save and exit. And it shows you what you changed. Clock ratio went from auto to 45, which is 4.5 gigahertz. Your V core went from auto up to 1.352 volts, and your core performance boost went from auto to disabled. You hit OK, let it boot back into the uh, into the Windows system here. Okay, 4.5. We was able to get back into Windows. We're gonna go down here, right click, go up to Task Manager, go over to where it says Performance. And right here's your CPU, and it says 4.5 gigahertz. So it is registering at 4.5 gigahertz. Let's go ahead and come down here and pull up hardware monitor. Hardware info 64 here. There we go. Ah, mainly we just want the sensors. Okay, just like before. Now this ain't gonna hit at quite as high on the voltage because we cut it back it was at 1.4.2 or something like that we cut it back to 1.35 um, but the ratio share you can see they're all set at 45 which would be 4.5 gigahertz okay so we're going to go over here and run the Cinebench R23 and like I explained earlier just to save time I'm going to be running this as a 10 minute test instead of a half hour test. If you're actually overclocking to see what your max stable overclock is for your CPU, you, you need to be running a half hour test on it just to make sure it's stable and to make sure it's going to, going to give you the performance uplift that you're looking to have. We want CPU multi-core and we want to hit run. And there it goes. We're gonna pull up hardware info. That way we can keep an eye on it as well. To make sure it's running at 100% usage, which it is. And every one of them is running at 4.5 or 4 gigahertz, 4.5 gigahertz. Let that run for the 10 minutes and we'll see what uh, what that comes up with, if it makes it through it. All right guys, looks like it finished up there at 4.5 gigahertz on all six cores, 12 thread processor. It looks like the temperature never exceeded uh, what 58.9 C so at 240 millimeter all in one is doing pretty good We did lose some voltage is only taking 1.10 volts Compared to what was what was 1.4.0 volts or something like that. It was pouring On stock, but we set it to 1.35 volts and it ain't even taking that yet uh, CPU usage was up to 100% uh, Your core ratio was 45 so let's see if we can get a little bit higher than 45. Since we got 45 out of it, I think we should be able to do, uh, we'll, we'll take it up to about 40, 48 or 4.8 gigahertz. 
We'll see if we can get that out of this uh, out of this processor here today. All right, here we go again. We had it up to 4.5. We had 1.35 T volts, which we're going to leave that the same. We just want to change that 4.5. We're going to change it to 48. Whoops. I do it right here. We'll go up to 48 on it, and we'll see what that comes up with. And then we're going to hit F10 to save and exit. And it just up the CPU clock ratio from 45 up to 48, which is yes. And again, we're going to run the Senate uh, Bench Door 23 for about 10 minutes. So I'll let this thing boot back up here, and, uh, if it will boot back up at that uh, frequency, and we'll see. Uh, yeah, as 48 wasn't stable. I couldn't even get the boot in. I had to reset the BIOS. So what it says, uh, 48, we're going to type in 47 and hit enter, which will make it 4.7 gigahertz. We're going to hit F10. The voltage is still set at 1.35, and the overclocking performance here for the core performance boost is still disabled. So let's see what this gets us for today. All right, all oh, this is a little bit of an interesting uh, error to get. It says an operating system was not found. Try to try to disconnecting any drives that don't contain an operating system. Press any key to restore. It's kind of interesting because the only thing I got in this system is that M.2. Um, so it's the only drive that's in the system, but we'll see if it if it actually boots in. Reboot and select proper boot device. All right, guys, so apparently the 4.7 ain't going to be stable. So I'm going to reset the BIOS once again. All right, y'all. The last message I showed you says that there was no bootable device on the hard drive. So it looks like Windows did not load correctly. So we're going to go back here and see repair options. We're going to go into uh, troubleshoot. We're going to go into advanced options. And we're going to go over to UEFI firmware settings. And we're going to hit restore. That's just another way to get into the BIOS. That should kick us right back into the BIOS where we can change the settings on it. All right, BIOS has been reset. Please configure your BIOS. Okay. There we go. Gotta love overclocking. Uh, let's go down here to advanced mode. We will go down to CPU voltage from auto. We're going to put it at one. 0.35 volts okay CPU settings core performance boost we're going to change that from auto change that down to disable because we don't want that doing anything we want our main road clock to be doing everything uh, the CPU clock the CPU clock control is on auto which is 100 times which is all right Right here where it says auto on the CPU clock ratio. 4.7 wasn't stable, so we're going to go with 46, which would make it 4.6 gigahertz on all cores. We're going to hit F10. It shows you everything you change, and we're going to hit yes. And we're going to see if it boots up at 4.6. 4.7 would not boot. For some reason, it was saying there was some kind of error within the Windows operating system. So I figured we cut back to 4.6 and see how good it runs. Uh, we do know that 4.5 does run. Hey, looky there, it actually booted up. We'll go down here and we're gonna right click, go up to task manager, just to do a same chest here. We got the CPU and it is running at 4.17, 4.3, which it will go up to 4.60 gigahertz. Uh, we'll go down here and pull up hardware info 64. All uh, right, we're going to search sensors only. So that's the main thing we we're interested in. Uh, core ratio right down through here is 4,600. 46 times 100, which would be 4.6 gigahertz. Um, right up here, you will see this uh, total CPU usage. It will jump up to a max of 100%. And of course, you have to scroll down here and uh, pay attention to your temperatures as well. We'll see what the temperatures run, but this should be pretty good because we're running 240 AIO on it. We're going to run Cinebench Door 23. Uh, minimum time duration. We're going to do 10 minutes because it is a video. Which, if you go down through here, we do have the 
Uh, what was it at? 3600? At 3.6, we had the 3600 at 4.5. We're going to hit start. Make sure it's torch. Ah, ain't stable. 4.6 ain't stable. So it looks like 4.5 is about the best I can get out of my 3600 on this motherboard. All right. Here we are. It did come back. We're going to try it again here. We're going to give the benefit of the doubt. Pull up task manager. And it is pushing up to 4.6 gigahertz. So we're going to go down here and pull up hardware info 64. Sensors only. Alright. Then we're going to go up here and run Cinebench R23. We're going to turn this down to 10 minutes. Because I don't have time to run a half hour on each one of these tests today. So we're only going to run it for 10 minutes. So what we've been running the other tests at. 10 minutes. Hit start. And nope. It keeps crashing. So that tells me that it is unstable. Let me get reset up here and I'll come up with the conclusion to the video. All right, all, and that's the way you get the max performance out of that CPU on the Gigabyte B550MDS3H motherboard. That's about the best I could get on my Ryzen 5 3600 on this motherboard. Like I said before, yours may do a little bit better or may, may not do quite as well as what mine did. It's called a silicon lottery. But that is the way, and this will work with any CPU that is compatible with this motherboard and the BIOS version that's on it. If you like this kind of content, go down and give me a like. If not, there's that dislike button. If you really like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on it, where you're notified next time I put out a video or go live here on YouTube. Also, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I don't care your inbox, but I do put up photos of new stuff coming up on the channel. If there's anything about my live stream, it's where you also get informed of that information with all that being said you all have a good day and i'll see you in the next video or live stream